I'm often called the mother of dance medicine, <laughs> or maybe the grandmother of dance medicine, because I was in the United States the first physical therapist to be hired on site by a very major ballet company, the New York City Ballet. I graduated from Columbia University in 1979, and at that time, it was still just a graduate certificate program. And it was a 14-month-long, excruciatingly hard program that really forced us to think on our feet all the time and to work very hard. My dance experience prepared me better than most because we moved every day. If you're a dancer and you've become a physical therapist, you speak the language of the dancer, so there's no need to translate what does it mean to do a plie in releve? How do you feel when you stop dancing and it's 10.30 at night when most people stop, stop working at five or six o'clock? I was fortunate enough to have gotten to know uh, George Balanchine, who invited me to come to the New York City Ballet and take care of his dancers. At the time, I was the only physical therapist working there. And then about four or five years later, I attracted a few other physical therapists who were interested in helping dancers. And so that's how the story went. Dancers perform on stage, and so they have to look ethereal, elegant, free, easy, with no problems. So you can't put them on stage taped up the way you can some sports people. Ashley is just returning after giving birth three months ago. So a lot of the ligaments are still a little bit lax and the muscles aren't exactly back to where they were pre-pregnancy. So we're trying to help her get back so that she'll return for the fall season of the New York City Ballet. As a physical therapist and, and pretty prominent in my field, I really feel that it's important for me to share the knowledge and information that I have gained because not many people have my experience. And the younger uh, physical therapists coming out of school, I think they're great with their book knowledge and they're great with their ability to learn quickly but they haven't seen all the intricate injuries that some of the dancers uh, unfortunately get. So my job, I feel, besides still treating patients, is to really pass on this knowledge as best I can. So a lot of my job is teaching, teaching the dancer and teaching other therapists about how to actually rehabilitate. And not just to take care of the injury, but to get the dancer back on stage, because that's one of the most glorious things of my job is to be able to then see them perform again. I'm also obviously involved with the International Association for Dance Medicine and Science, which was founded in 1990 to really help dancers continue dancing and help the providers who work with them to understand what their needs are. Columbia graduates always are at the top of their field in education. Columbia graduates who come here are obviously dancers who became physical therapists who want to work with dancers. It's not just the book knowledge, it's the actual fact of getting this person, this beautiful dancer, back on stage. I think when students start looking at schools, one of the things they need to consider is the location because Columbia, being in Manhattan, offers them things that other schools cannot. The professors are world-renowned and they've all been published. So they don't just teach at the university, they actually treat patients, which is always a wonderful thing. And I also see Columbia as a forerunner or a front-runner in the field of musculoskeletal medicine. And not just for dancers, but of course that's my specialty, but for anybody that loves to move and wants to keep moving through the years. As far as I'm concerned, the best education there is out there. And it's in Manhattan. It's in New York City. It's the cultural center of the universe. My name is Marika Molnar, and I am a Columbia physical therapist.